What is going on guys? Gino Checker back in for another video today. Does it look weird with my glasses on? I've never actually vlogged with glasses on, especially since I've only had them for two days. Normally I always have contact lenses and I still wear contacts, but especially at night, uh, for those of you who have experience with contact lenses, it can suck. So uh, I'm wearing glasses a little bit more off from now on and to be fair, I quite like them. Anyway, I had a new low weight of 87.3 kilograms. Or 87.25. I forgot what it was, but anyway, you saw it in the footage. I'm leaning out very quick right now, man. And to be honest, this is the leanest that I want to be for the photo shoot. So what I'm now going to be doing is linearly carb up uh, by adding around 25 or 50 grams of carbs already. Uh, now that I'm four days out from the shoot. And then two days before the photo shoot, I'm going to be having some higher carb days. As in around my refeed average to really fill out the glycogen because in one day refeeding or having higher carbs, you can truly fill out your glycogen since it takes a little bit longer. So I'm already adding in some carbs now that I'm lean enough. Like I'm giving myself enough time to actually fill up and get my skin a little bit tighter around the muscle. I'll post a clip on the screen from when I decided to go for this photo shoot and versus now. There's a quite significant difference. I haven't changed my calories. I've only upped my cardio just slightly by adding like one session per week on pretty much the same calories or just slightly above that. And this just goes to show, slow and steady wins the race. Trust the process and the process will reward you. That's Carlo. Guys, so here is the breakfast of the day. I normally always have my cream of wheat, but I was in the store yesterday and I saw a mix of a lot of different kinds of wheats or something like that. It's all like different types of grains. So I have uh, some cream of rice, some cream of oats, some cream of wheat, and it's all mixed. There's seven types of grains and uh, it actually tastes pretty damn good. Uh, of course, besides that, I have my usual legendary Nutella sandwich my morning coffee and some water to get hydrated. Time for the second meal of the day. So what I have right here for the second meal of the day is pretty much just the same as I always eat for the uh, second meal, but I just like showing my meals to you guys. So we have the usual bowl of scare strawberry flavor. Now I alternate uh, vanilla and strawberry, just basically whatever is in my fridge. Then I have two rice cakes all cracked up into the bowl. Below that I have, if I can manage to uh, pull it out. Can you see that? Two kiwis sliced up and mixed all together. One more cup of coffee to get more caffeine action going on. I also had one piece of 85% uh, dark chocolate, but as per usual, <laughs> I already ate it. So for the majority of the morning, it's now 12.30 uh, in the uh, afternoon, I've been editing my new video, which is on the five biggest fat loss mistakes. So I guess if you're watching this video, that video will probably already be up. So be sure to watch it to uh, ensure that you're not making the five biggest fat loss mistakes. And I want to be in the gym in about an hour or an hour and a half. So I'm going to be devouring this meal or deleting it, whatever you want to call it. Get my coffee in and then head to the gym for my last actual intense workout. Uh, I'm going to be dropping the training stress a couple of days before the shoot simply because when you're training and especially with a adequate enough intensity, your cortisol levels or your stress levels will be pretty much on the higher side, especially your physical stress levels, which can come from external factors such as your training, relationship stress, family stress, uh, business related stress, job stress, school stress, you name it, any kind of form that you can get stressed out about or that you can feel stress from will result in you holding a little bit more water. And especially when you want to look as lean as possible, it's important to take these stress factors in mind and minimize them to your best capabilities. So of course you can always control things such as um, family stress, job related stress, relationship stress, and all of those kind of factors, but you can control your training stress. So it's not a full on deload that I'm going to be taking. It's just you focusing on getting some blood into the muscles, doing a quote unquote 
pump workout, which allows your muscles to store a lot more glycogen from the carbs that you're going to be increasing. Since normally when you train intense, you're using up a lot of the glycogen, which can actually make it harder for your muscles to store them, which is what you want when you're doing a photo shoot or a competition, or just want to be as lean as possible for any certain event. Since if your muscle glycogen is a lot more full, the skin will be a lot tighter around the muscle since the muscle is obviously a lot fuller, which results in a leaner and more muscular look. My new contacts. Do we look any different? I guess not, but I can see a major difference. Let's head to the gym. So I figured it'd be a nice idea to answer some of the questions that you left under my previous videos. So I'll just be picking random comments that uh, were either questions or just really good comments that I would like to give some commentary on. Gabriel Pepin, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, asked, can you gain muscles in a calorie deficit? Um, you definitely can in certain situations, right? If you're currently a beginner, you can definitely gain muscle in the beginnings, especially since your muscles are currently just not adapted to the stimulus of weight training. And once you start going to the gym, start lifting weights, add progressive overload to your training, your muscles will grow, whether you're in a caloric deficit or in a caloric surplus. Obviously the caloric surplus will help to promote the muscle gaining process a lot faster and better, but it's definitely possible to gain muscle in a caloric deficit, all right? It might not happen as fast as you were to be in a caloric surplus, obviously, but as long as you're eating enough protein and you're adding progressive overload to your training, while focusing then on losing fat, obviously, you will see progress. But that's only for around the first one to three years of lifting. After that, it becomes way too hard and then it is definitely just worth it to hop on a bulk. Bellamy Kun said, amazing physique, thank you. Keep going, quick question, what are your one rep max weights? To be honest, I do not really know, All right? The last time that I've tested my one rep maxes has been a very, very long time ago. I'm talking like years probably. Uh, and the reason that I don't really test it that often or pretty much just never in general is uh, because there is a difference between testing your strength, and it's obviously very cool to know that, uh, and building your strength, right? And as of late, I'm not really focusing on purely increasing my strength. I'm really focused on hypertrophy training. So I'm not really doing any sets lower than five reps, simply because I want the most amount of stimulus on my muscles, which will result in more hypertrophy. Chirayu Sharma asks, how much cardio did you do when you started your cut? I believe at the start of the cut, I didn't do any cardio whatsoever, but eventually I upped it to 700 calories of weekly cardio. And I spread that out into, I believe, three sessions per week in which I burned 235 calories, right? In terms of my cardio, I always look at the weekly total and then I divide that into multiple sessions. Because in terms of reaching a fat loss plateau, you can either choose to add 700 calories of weekly cardio or you can eat 100 calories less, which multiplied by seven days, will result in the same weekly deficit. This is actually a very good question. Uh, Gixer1018 asks, Gino, is there any reason that you're not using the RPT type of programming anymore on your own program? Uh, good question, because obviously I talk a lot about my RPT Lean Mass program, which is a very good program if you're interested in both gaining muscle and gaining strength, which pretty much means the best of both worlds. Uh, I've run that program for a long time. I'm talking like a year and a half. Pretty much the only reason that I'm currently not following it anymore is because after following the same program for a year and a half, uh, I was 
really just looking for a change, right? Eventually everything becomes stale and you're doing the same thing over and over again, which is a very good thing to do since you're chasing muscular and strength adaptations, since you can then build upon that and gain muscle and gain strength. But I was just uh, looking for a change. I still really like the program and I will definitely start doing it again in the near future. But as of now, I'm doing a little different type of programming. Right, so I figured it'd be nice to just answer some comments here in the video itself. If you would like it if I did this more often, then please let me know in the comments down below. That is it for this video, guys. I sincerely hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to smash the like button because it truly helps out the channel grow. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Enter post notifications on for so much more content coming really soon. I'm out, guys. And peace out. See you in the next one.